Welcome back. All right, career video. Brandon Shanahan. So this was requested in the, the live stream, one of the live streams we had. And it's been in the back of my mind since then. So Hall of Famer, Brandon Shanahan. Who, at the beginning of his career, looked like he might end up being a flop. Because, you know, people have kind of an, uh, an issue with having patience when it comes to young players. Uh, he's the number two pick in 1987. So 87, 88, a lot of excitement. And it was, it was a mixed bag that first year. Played 65 games, 7 goals, 19 assists, 26 points for the New Jersey Devils. New Jersey Devils, a team that had never had any kind of success. But in the playoffs, 88's the year Sean Burke was kind of a hero for New Jersey. Shanahan placed 12 playoff games that year. 2 goals and 1 assist, 3 points. And that experience seemed to help. 88-89, his numbers get better. 68 games played, 22 goals, 28 assists, 50 points. No playoffs. New Jersey missed the playoffs that year, so they made up for uh, going on an unexpected run by missing the playoffs altogether. And it, it took a lot of the wind out of the sails of, of New Jersey fans and, and for the organization, but of course we know they turned it around. Uh, and Shanahan would be part of that indirectly. 89-90 plays 73 games, 30 goals, his first 30 goal season, 42 assists, 72 points. In the playoffs, they're out in the first round. Six games, three goals, three assists, six points. So Shanahan's a really good young forward, right? So his final year of his contract with the New Jersey Devils, 75 games, 29 goals, 37 assists, 66 points. <clears throat> and in the playoffs, in seven games, three goals, five assists, eight points. So he's trending in the right direction. Now the St. Louis Blues in the early 90s, they are a team that's spending a lot of money. They are a team that's trying to put together basically the, the best roster humanly available. So with no shyness when it comes to how much money they're willing to offer, they offer Shanahan money, and he goes. But notice, he's still very young. So the NHL had this process where you'd go to an arbitrator. So on July 25th, he signs as a free agent with St. Louis. Cool. The arbitrator sits down and goes, all right, well, um, the compensation going to New Jersey for St. Louis signing Brandon Shanahan is going to be Scott Stevens. Scott Stevens goes to New Jersey, and they win a Stanley Cup not long after that, and they win a few Stanley Cups, and it is a turning point for both franchises. Brendan Shanahan is tied to Scott Stevens from here going forward. Plays 80 games that first year in St. Louis, 33 goals, 36 assists, 69 points. They're out in the first round that year. Six games, two goals, three assists for five points. The following year, fantastic season for Brendan Shanahan. 71 games. 51 goals, 43 assists, 94 points. So 51 goals is not too bad at all. 11 games in the playoffs, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. So Shanahan tied to Stevens still, but at this point, the, it's about even, right? It's not like New Jersey's won a cup. 93-94, uh, 81 games, 52 goals. So that is a career high for him, 50 assists. And the first time in his career, and the last time in his career, he has over 100 points, 102 points. Four games in the playoffs, two goals, five assists, seven points. He's a first-team All-Star. And it, honestly, he is a, he's a superstar at this point in the game. 94-95, plays 45 games in a lockout-shortened season. 20 goals, 21 assists, 41 points. Disappointing season for him. And a disappointing postseason for the team. He plays four, five games, four goals, five assists for nine points. So his playoffs were good, but the team's playoffs weren't great. So, St. Louis decides to do something crazy. Uh, July 27th of 1995, they trade Brendan Shanahan for Chris Pronger. The interesting thing with this, of course, is this is the second time in his career already that he's been attached to a guy who's going to go to the Hall of Fame. But Chris Pronger's start in Hartford was rough. Had a tough time for, for, for himself in Hartford. And so, this was a trade that at the time didn't look quite as lopsided as it would later in that Shanahan you know was still capable of being a 40 goal scorer and Pronger yeah he might become that dominant defenseman that Hartford drafted number two overall but yeah, maybe he won't right then he did for St. Louis 95-96 playing for the Hartford Whalers uh, Brendan Shanahan 74 games 44 goals 34 assists 78 points no playoffs because it's Hartford 96-97 uh, he plays two games for Hartford, one goal, and he's traded again. 
Now, what's interesting is on October 9th, he gets traded. Now, what's interesting with this trade is he's traded to the Detroit Red Wings with Brian Glenn for a 1997 first round pick, which becomes uh, Nicholas Chelios. Uh, Paul Coffey and Keith Primo go the other way. So it's not a bad deal. And what's interesting is he's traded three times in his career and every single time he's traded, well, he's traded twice, he signed as a free agent and there's compensation going the other way. These first three occasions, there's a Hall of Fame defenseman going the other way. Scott Stevens, Chris Pronger, and then Paul Coffey. Weird, right? So he goes to Detroit and it is an immediate, it, it just works. It, it fits, right? Perfect fit. 79 games, 46 goals, 41 assists, 87 points. This was the Detroit team coming off of the most disappointing season ever in 95-96. 96-97 is quite a different story, and Shanahan's a huge part. 20 games in the playoffs, 9 goals, 8 assists, 17 points, and a Stanley Cup. So, fantastic year for him. Now, 97-98, statistically, not as good of a season. Uh, 75 games, 28 goals, 29 assists, 57 points. So his, his points total drops quite a bit. But in the playoffs, it doesn't matter. 20 games, 5 goals, 4 assists, 9 points. And even though that drops, guess what? He's holding up the Stanley Cup for, for the second time in two years. So Shanahan, who had never been out of the second round all the way up until then, suddenly has back-to-back -back Stanley Cups about a decade into his career. This is why when you have a young player having a hard time getting out of the first or second round through you know first five six seven years and people say he's not a playoff contender or he's not a playoff player or he's you know no team's going to win with him on the roster eventually you may get proven wrong um so in 98 99 81 games played 31 goals 27 assists 58 points in the playoffs 10 games three goals seven assists 10 points this is right around where a lot of the complaints are out there that detroit needs to get younger Okay, so you've got all these old guys. Detroit needs to get younger. You know, he Shanahan's not getting any younger. You need to get younger. So the complaints are out there. And then in 99-2000, uh, Shanahan has quite the resurgence. 78 games, 41 goals, 37 assists, 78 points. In the playoffs, 9 games, 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points. He's a first-team All-Star for the second time in his career. But again, it's still the, well, yeah, Detroit got the back-to-back -back cuts, but... They're going to need to get younger. 2000-2001, 81 games, 31 goals, 45 assists, 76 points. In the playoffs, he only played two games, had two goals, two assists for four points. Still, when are they going to get younger? When is Detroit going to do some kind of a, a change to the, the makeup of this team? Well, 2001-2002, he's still in Detroit. 80 games, 37 goals, 38 assists, 75 points. In the playoffs, he has quite the playoffs. 23 games, 8 goals, 11 assists, 19 points, and he's a Stanley Cup winner, and he's a second-team All-Star. So where you get your Hall of Fame-level credentials is two first-team All-Stars, a second-team All-Star, and three Stanley Cups. And then there's the longevity side of it, which whether we like it or not, players that play longer will have an easier time getting into the Hall of Fame than players that don't. Um, so that was quite the, the turn... And then in 2002-2003, 78 games, 30 goals, 28 assists, 58 points. Uh, in the playoffs, four games, one goal, one assist for two points. Detroit is out, and now it's official. They're going to need to make some kind of changes, right? Uh, he won the King Clancy Trophy that year. So good leader, Brandon Shanahan. And of course, we've seen that after his career is done as well. Uh, and then in 2003-2004, 82 games, 25 goals, 28 assists, 53 points. In the playoffs... 12 games, 1 goal, 5 assists, 6 points. And again, we're having these discussions on where Detroit is at. So we have the lockout wiped out season of 0405, And then we get into it in 0506. Still in Detroit. And after a year off, uh, he, he has another really good year. 82 games, 40 goals, 41 assists, 81 points. Now in the playoffs, 6 games played, 1 goal, 1 assist, 2 points. And Detroit allows his contract to end. And he goes off on July 9th. He signs as an unrestricted free agent with the New York Rangers. Because it feels like every player has to go to the Rangers at this point in time before their career is done. It just it felt like if you're a legend, eventually you're a Ranger. Uh, 67 games, 29 goals, 33 assists, 62 points for the Rangers that first year. And the playoffs, 10 games, 5 goals, 2 assists, and 7 points. Good playoff totals for Brandon Shanahan. 2007-2008, uh, 73 games. 
23 goals, 23 assists, 46 points. And in the playoffs, 10 games, one goal, four assists for five points. So again, very solid, but he is getting older, right? So it takes until January 15th, 2009 before he signs for the following season. And he goes back where it started, New Jersey. Plays 34 games that year, six goals, eight assists, 14 points. And in the playoffs, seven games, one goal, two assists, three points in what would be his final season. And again, it, it shows just how dramatic that drop-off is. So when we talk about contracts and we talk about the dangers of a contract and people will say, and I get this a lot of, well, he had a really good year this year, so what are you worried about? It's fine. He's fine. There will be that drop-off eventually. And with GMs, it's a matter of trying to figure out exactly when that drop-off is going to happen. And for Detroit, um, could they have brought him back for a couple more years? Maybe, but uh, he had a couple good years with the Rangers. And then he, he, he leaves the way he came in as a New Jersey Devil. Ends up with 1,524 games in his career. That's 19th on the all-time games played list. 656 goals, which is 14th. 698 assists, which is 56th. In points, 1,354, which is 26th. In the playoffs, 184 games played. 60 goals, 74 assists for 134 points. So, he retires... Not long after, the NHL comes calling. They see leadership potential in him. They hire him. And then June 1st of 2011, not long after he started working for the NHL, remember he retires in 2009, uh, he became the NHL Senior Vice President, which is when he became a very publicly facing uh, member of the NHL's executive. And as the Senior Vice President, he's in Colin Campbell's old role of deciding on discipline. And he's the one that starts handing out videos saying, here's the discipline and here's why. And when we look at what's going on with, with hockey now and the discipline and how, how suspensions are or aren't given, people point back to Shanahan and say, man, we miss when Brendan Shanahan was doing this. So Shanahan got quite a, a decent reputation for doing that. And again, contrast that with how things are now when it comes to players being disciplined for uh, various infractions. It says a lot about Shanahan that people like the way he did the job. Uh, April 11th, 2014, he accepted the job to become the Leafs president. And I don't think there's a more difficult team in the league to allow, to, to, to basically agree to run. Because of the amount of scrutiny, because of the amount of media involved, and just because of the, the pressure you're going to get. The fact that he's been in charge in Toronto for now seven years, uh, it says a lot. And while there are some who may have you know, given up on the Shanna plan. At the very least, Toronto now is a playoff team every year, and they've done quite well. They were kind of in the tank when he when he took over, right? Now, he also had some really good success internationally. Uh, he had Olympic gold in 2002 in Salt Lake City. Uh, 1999, he wins a world championship gold at the Men's World Championships. 1991, he won a Canada Cup gold. 1987, he might have won a World Junior Championship gold. We'll never know. Uh, that was the year that Canada and the Soviet Union chose violence. They had a 20-minute brawl. that uh, It increased the profile of the World Junior Championships in, in Canada and just in general. And, and it, it kind of got Canada watching a tournament that maybe it wasn't as interested in before. It wasn't quite the, the juggernaut in Canada that it is now. If, just in terms of advertising and promotion, the World Juniors is a huge deal now that it really wasn't in the mid-80s. But uh, yeah, it, the, so they decided to uh, disqualify the Soviets and the Canadians. The vote was 7-1. to one. The only dissenting vote was a Canadian on the board who stated that he felt that there was a selfish reason why other countries were voting to boot out the Soviets and the Canadians because then it's easier for them to win medals. You get two of the best teams out of the tournament, it might be easier for you to win a medal. So it was a, a, a tough tournament for Shanahan to be sure, because, yeah, if he had won that gold medal in 1987, if that had happened, he would have had gold in four different tournaments. Canada Cup, World Championship, Olympics, and the World Juniors. So either way, that international experience, combined with the Stanley Cups, his first team all-star appearances. It's a Hall of Fame career. So there you go. The Hall of Fame career of Brandon Shanahan. And I'm wearing my, my Gordie Howe jersey for this because why not? I knew it had to be Red Wings, so I thought I'll wear the Gordie Howe. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. 
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.